What up everybody, welcome to the channel Dan Cool and this is it. This is the video that we all have been waiting for. It's the overclocking tutorial for the Pascal especially graphics card created by me, Dan Cool. So yeah, I'm going to talk about all the pros and cons while I am guiding you through each steps uh, that you require in order to achieve the maximum absolute maximum performance or even maximum limit of your graphics card it doesn't matter what we do there will be some limitations that we can't really bypass at this point of time or, or even creation of this video that I would believe can be bypassed in the future and let's get to it shall we Okay, let's jump into the PC, shall we? Once you are in, I want you to download it or install MSI Afterburner. And as you can see, this is the best overclocking utility that you can get at the internet so far because I managed to get 1.2 volts by using the curve overclocking method instead of the slider. Well, you don't really require you doing this, but if you would like to, I would highly recommend to do the sliding method because I managed to get the highest overclock on this GPU. So before you want to start overclocking, go to your settings and please ensure that all of these config are ticked in order for you to get that constant voltage as well as the extended compatibility for your graphics card. After you are done, it might ask to restart the application, do it if you haven't and let's go start doing overclocking shall we? Alright, this first guide is dedicated for those who seeks basic overclocking, let's start shall we? If you want to put everything on stock except core voltage, you want to keep that at 100% at its max and try to put your core clock up to 25 degrees for those who are doing what are calling overclocking and we shall see the performance from Fermark. This application is really useful for those who seek overclocking since it stresses the GPU to its limit and you can see the temperature started incrementally increasing and you will potentially see the stability of your graphics card whether if this type of performance will suit the graphics card for a long time run. And as you can see, we are sitting at 55 degrees Celsius with a core clock of 2114 megahertz. And as you can see, you must run this at least 10 minutes or even start playing games that is really demanding in order to see this type of stability. We just finished with the basic overclocking. Let's jump to advanced overclocking for those who seek the most out of their GPU performance. And this is it. You want to press Ctrl F and it will show you curve overclocking method. By doing this, you can precisely control where your GPU frequency have to be locked on when it's being fully stressed. I'm not going to show you how to flash a BIOS at this point because it will take way too long for us to do it. So here we are in the curve overclocking method and in my opinion, you would like to go step by step. Let's just try 1.15 from this point of time if you want to overclock and see if your um, temperature is decent or even stable enough to deliver this type of performance. And I managed to get 2.2 gigahertz or even 2202 megahertz on the core clock. That's right, you heard me right. It's 2.2 gigahertz on the core clock. This type of performance on a water cooling system is insanely fantastic and even phenomenal for anyone to get it. I would really recommend anyone out there to get a 828 pin GPU if you want to go overclocking the hell out of it, which in my case I went with the gigabytes. And yes, this kind of performance is really a serious gun dude, it's a serious bullet. Such performance that you are seeing right now is done in a water block, water cooling system. Just ensure that your GPU frequency is stable enough to accept such frequency at the 
long run as you are overclocking. So conclusion time. You might be wondering why are you doing such insanely crazy things then cool. So as you can see I'm a type of person who would like to see the most performance out of my system down there and I am really kind of um, aware of the disadvantages that we obviously have by overclocking it obviously will reduce the lifespan of your graphics card as well as seeing the silicon being reduced to its max potential where it will require more voltage to keep that certain frequency in the future and trust me guys uh, this type of performance not many have done it especially with Whirlblock I mean maybe they are out there that have done it I would like to apologize if they are and felt offended and it is one of a kind to have you know to see this type of performance you can kind of like being in those overclocking um, championships saying oh we got this type of performance on this and that and this and that that's why they got this all of this um, overclocking championship because they want to see how far they can push the hardware to its knees and you may already know that Nvidia's GPU Boost 3.0 sucks it is horrifying I'm not gonna lie that from 60 degrees Celsius it will drag the hell down 10 megahertz below your fixed set frequency as you are overclocking in the um, GPU for the long term usage and I get it I get it. overclocking is basically overspecking the GPU where it will not be able to handle such frequency high frequency mind you at a certain rate and the reason why I managed to get such overclocking performance it's because I am actually in a winter season right now heading towards that winter season where you can get the most out of your system as you are overclocking please keep in mind to look at the temperature how high it is if it goes up to 70 mm, nah, nah, that's not a good sign it will basically destroys your GPU for the long run be getting such a fantastic uh, temperature like I am which is 60 degrees Celsius it's a phenomenal temperature and if it goes to 65 it's fine maybe I'm not sure about you but uh, I've been using this for nearly for two weeks mind you and I haven't really changed the thermal paste anything at all it might have burnt off some of it dissipates the thermal paste because thermal paste do not actually last very long if you overclock so much I usually <laughs> change them once in a week but I haven't been changing for two weeks so you might think it's a waste but overclocking there are some cons and pros alrighty let's talk about the pros or even cons by doing overclocking as you may already know overclocking is basically overspecking your hardware any kind of hardware in this so in this particular video we overclocking or even overspecking the GPU and it will come to a cost the disadvantage are the first one is that you're going to um, reduce the lifespan of the GPU as well as increasing the temperature of your GPU it can be the core clock VRM memory depends which one you really overclock the most it will produce the heat I don't believe it will be the core clock on this one because we pushed it to 2202 megahertz which is 2.2 gigahertz in this case and yes it is actually will come to your benefits some benefits that you will basically receive such as higher FPS low frame time so that means you, you will basically seize the movement in the monitor a lot more faster because it will push it a lot um, these frames a lot more quicker by the response time I'm saying the yeah, higher FPS which will really affect those that are um, doing high gaming high resolution gaming such as 4k with everything on ultra or even maxed out this can affect those people 
and I do believe that if you actually go with SLI config 2.2 gigahertz would not be very achievable since SLI utilizes two graphics cards am I right yeah I am right and I have actually done it on some previous graphics cards that will increase the temperature by quite a lot but that's it for me guys I will see you in the next ankle video peace Shh.